I have worked for myself since I was 17 years old and I'm 31 now. I have 14 years of entrepreneurial experience. I'm here to tell you that you can live your goals and dreams. Yes, it's hard. I had to work very hard to escape poverty without my dad being raised by a sick mom. But here's what I can promise you. After you listen to today's episode, you will have some gems that will literally change your life forever. So I welcome you to episode 24, part six of Just Get Up and Manifest Your Inner Genius. This series is highlighting my book, Just Get Up and Manifest Your Inner Genius. It'll be available next week and you can still pre-order it. Now, I want to talk about chapter eight, nine and 10. Chapter eight is entitled absolute versus relative versus relative slash absolute goals. Now, when you think about that, they may sound funny. However, identifying these two types of goals will literally change your life forever. All goals can be summed up as absolute or relative or a combination of both. So either it's going to be more absolute and a little bit of relative or more relative and a little bit of absolute or either or relative or absolute. Now, I'll give you an example. Now, the reason why understanding the nuances between these goals are critical is because you need to understand when it is your fault and how much control you have over the outcome. A relative goal is going to the NBA. Now, there's a degree of it that's absolute, but this is more relative. For example, they're only going to take about 500 players each year. Millions of people are trying out. A lot of those people are good enough and could possibly be better than some of the people that are drafted. Some certain tangibles happen, such as not showing up and playing as well, or different scouts have their own biases, certain things they may be looking for that aren't displayed at that time. It could be possible that you could go overlook bad timing. Now, you can control how much you work, how much effort you put into it, but whenever your outcome is determined by other people, that is a relative goal. So you must always attach an absolute goal to a relative goal. For example, if one is trying to go to the NBA, maybe they need to pursue this goal wholeheartedly because no one should tell you what you should pursue. If you believe in yourself and you think that you have what it takes, then go for it. That's your life, your dream. However, it is a course of wisdom to always attach an absolute goal to a relative goal. So maybe investigate being a sports commentator or a coach or the 1,000 or the thousands of other ways. There are literally thousands of ways that one could work in a sports field. So one must do that. And also you must understand when something is purely an absolute goal. For example, a business. Now that is to a degree somewhat relative but if there are other people that have a successful business, then you can have one too. Getting in shape, that's all on you. Changing your diet, no one can do that for you. So you can get help and assistance, but only you can make that change. So if you're not losing weight, it's your fault. If you're not changing your eating habits, it's your fault. So you must understand and accept those things because fitness is a law. Exercise principles are laws. If you overeat, you gain weight. Now, there are some factors, but that's not determining whether the person is rather or not. That's not determining whether or not the person loses weight. Trust me. Big bone, uh, hypothyroidism, all those things are factors. But if you continuously eat well and exercise, the weight will come off. So right now, what are your absolute and relative goals? Do you understand the nuances? The quicker you understand what you have direct control over, the quicker you can put more emphasis on those things. And the quicker you determine what you don't have control over, then you don't have to worry about those things as much because you have to recognize those differences. Now, here's what I want you to understand. You must develop your genius so that you can give birth to your dreams. When you think about a baby, you 
you have to raise a baby, the embryo, fetus, and then even after it's born, all the different trimesters. But all you know at that time is when some when a woman is pregnant is that they're expecting a child. You don't even know the gender of the child right away. Your dreams are the same way. Dreams don't come out fully formed. All you need to know is that you're pregnant with an idea and nurture it. Even after you give birth to the, to the idea, you still have to raise it. But watch the progress, just like you will watch, watch a baby. And I've discovered that you should pursue three dreams that are closely connected all at the same time. And you rotate them. Now, in chapter nine of my book, I talk about this. It's called the 27-month plan. And it works. What's interesting, the 27-month plan worked exactly for my book when I had to go to write a book. My book is literally being released exactly 27 months from when I started it. Now, I couldn't have predicted that, but here's what I want to tell you. If you follow this program's format, the 27-month plan, you'll see how to rotate your dreams, how to develop it. If you don't understand what your gift is, see, this format is was created to help you to discover your gifts. And I can guarantee you that my 27 month plan will help you to discover your inherent gift if you don't know what it is. And if you don't know what your gifts are, or if you don't know what your main gift is, simply ask yourself, if you did know what it is, what would it be? You don't have to search for it. God put your inherent gifts right inside of you. So really read that chapter. It's gonna really help you. Now, once you move on to chapter 10, mind frame of a genius you're going to see people like albert einstein uh oprah winfrey isaac newton and several others and you're going to see that all these people had several adversities years before their dreams were manifested so all successful people and i'm not just talking about people that have a lot of money but all successful people the people that go after what they want it could be simply attaining children, whatever it is. Everybody or all these successful people have something in common. And you must identify that. You must understand that, that success leaves clues. People who have, have, who have attained their goals and dreams, they are only exceptions. You must understand that. Now, you will be an exception as well. They're not esoteric. They're only examples. Now, what I mean by exceptions, they're exceptions because they had the ability to decry the naysayers, to step outside the norms of society. And you can do that as well. So make sure you read those chapters. So once you realize the different types of goals and really understand those goals, and then you have the proper format to discover your gifts and pursuing it, and then once you understand the blueprint from everyone else who has done uh, something great, then you must understand that they are exceptions in their own category, but they are only examples. You are an exception and you will be an example and a model of success. But here's the question. Do you have the courage to do this? Will you just get up and manifest your inner genius? Only time will tell. But remember, time isn't on your side. How you use your 24 hours dictates what you will become. I'm calling you to action. May you get up and just manifest your inner genius. Pre-order my book. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on it. Remember, feel free to hire me for motivational speech, uh, fitness coaching, sales coaching, nutrition coaching, any of those things. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day. And remember, this is your life. Take control over it. You dictate the outcome. Have a great day. Thank you.